Unless you were hiding under a rock this week, or a megalith, you may have noticed an awesome paper was published in the Cambridge Archaeological Journal, which was immediately picked up by major online news portals. In it, researchers discussed the discovery of a proto-writing system and seasonal calendar, which both formed part of the impressive Upper Paleolithic cave art found in multiple locations all over Europe. Let's get into it. Cave art dating back tens of thousands of years has been found in around 400 caves and rock shelters across Europe over the years, and more could be waiting to be discovered. The Upper Paleolithic inhabitants of these caves and their surrounding areas painted non-figurative images from around 42,000 years ago, which were joined by rather skilled figurative images, largely of animals, from around 37,000 years ago. Up until now, researchers were not able to assign a specific meaning to the non-figurative signs, even though scholars did think that some of these images must notate something. The new study not only suggests a meaning for these non-figurative signs, but also proposes that when combined with animal images, they represented seasonal calculations. This means that they are also the earliest form of proto-writing. As you may know, fully-fledged writing systems didn't develop until the Bronze Age, but some limited etchings from the Neolithic are thought to be examples of proto-writing, even though they have not been translated. Similarly, the Paleolithic markings were long viewed as a possible proto-writing system, but without knowing what information was being conveyed, it was difficult to confirm this. Now, the evidence outlined in this paper pushes proto-writing back tens of thousands of years. Much of the animal art from the Paleolithic is very detailed, so experts have been able to work out which species are represented and to pinpoint the time of year in which these species were depicted based on certain features such as their fur. For example, a sequence of images depicted in Lascaux, France around 21,500 years ago shows an animal in the process of rutting, which indicates seasonality. The abstract signs analysed in the paper include a Y-shape, vertical lines and dots, which in 66% of instances are found associated with animal images. These were not just painted on the walls of caves and rock shelters, but were also etched onto portable objects such as bones. Scholars have long viewed these engraved portable objects as external memory systems, however what they encoded was not understood. Certain characteristics of the dots and lines, such as their equal size and spacing and varying lengths, have also attracted attention from experts over the years who think they must represent a numbering system. However, once again, it was not clear what information was meant to be communicated through the signs. During the Upper Paleolithic, hunter-gatherers supplemented their foraging diet with horse, cervid, bovid, caprid, proboscidean, and marine foods. These animals all had annual mating, birthing, and migration cycles. There are many indications that these cycles were well understood by hunter-gatherers, which makes sense, since such knowledge would have been important for their survival. It's unlikely that the non-figurative signs next to or overlaying the animal images represented a part of the animal or were a matter of chance, since they can be found on many different types of taxa, and the number four appears to be represented frequently. So the authors of the paper suggest that the markings represent units of time which are related to biologically significant significant events in the lives of the animals that they appear next to. Since the number of markings is normally quite low and never exceeds the number 13, they posit that these signs indicate months. Hunter-gatherers could easily have calculated months based on the visible lunar phases. The researchers then go a step further and propose that the months must have been anchored to a start date, thereby forming a calendar. Although in the later Neolithic, farmers are known to have tracked the solstices and equinoxes, these dates would not have been useful for hunter-gatherers. The most important time for a hunter-gatherer's calendar to begin 
would have been the end of the winter when flora began to flourish again and fauna started its migrations. Such a calendar would have been in use until the following winter, only to begin again the next year. Hunter-gatherers would not have needed to overcome the discrepancy between the solar and lunar years, since such accuracy would not have been required. The authors give the start of the calendar the French name Bon Saison. Therefore, they hypothesize that the dots or lines represent the number of months that have passed since the Bon Saison and correlate to a specific event in the life of the animal, such as birthing, mating, or migrating. Since the sign which looks like a modern Y appears frequently in Upper Paleolithic art, its position in a sequence of symbols is different depending on the animal species it's next to, and it looks a bit like the act of giving birth, the researchers also looked for evidence that it's meant to indicate when that particular animal birthed. The authors of the study analysed all the available data, looking for patterns and ethological and zooarchaeological proof of their hypothesis. Where they weren't sure about the annual cycles of Paleolithic taxa, they used information from the closest modern relatives, and also took into account meteorological differences between then and now. They found 606 sequences of markings which didn't include the Y sign, and 256 sequences which did. These were then further categorised based on the animals they were associated with. Species were also classified into groups if they birthed, mated and migrated at similar times. This resulted in the following groups being used in the study. Aurochs, birds, bison, caprids, cervids, fish, horses, mammoths and rhinos. The authors found statistically significant evidence that the markings corresponded with biological events of each species, such as birthing and mating, or in the case of birds, hatching, and concluded that there's a strong likelihood the Y sign did specifically represent giving birth. Interestingly, the conclusions drawn in the paper show that this system was stable over tens of thousands of years and across a broad geographical region. Of course, it's not possible to know how many or what languages hunter-gatherers spoke, but this written notational system does seem to be consistent regardless of where it was used. There are many markings which do not make sense, and there's lots of cave art that doesn't include signs at all. But overall, the evidence points to there having been a widespread and stable notational system. It's not clear which members of a hunter-gatherer group would have used it or had access to it. There's a possibility such information was preserved for a privileged few, but such a calendar would certainly have served an immensely practical purpose in understanding the flora and fauna that the hunter-gatherers relied on for survival. It's debatable as to what extent this notational system can be defined as proto-writing, however the Y shape could very well have represented the verb to give birth. This paper is very complicated and there's an overwhelming amount of supplementary data attached to it, so if you want to dig deep, it's open access and the information is detailed in the description below. I've done my best to summarise it, as always. It's completely logical to me that hunter-gatherers would have kept track of flora and fauna for the purpose of their own survival. Analyses of cave art over the years have found lots of interesting information encoded in the images. I did a video on the depiction of a volcanic eruption which was found amongst the wall murals of Chauvet Cave in France. I've linked the video below in case you missed it. That's the oldest known depiction of a volcanic eruption. During the much later Neolithic, it's also thought that the inhabitants of Katalhoyuk in Turkey painted an eruption as well. In terms of survival, keeping calendars and recording natural events would have been a perfectly practical thing to do throughout prehistory. Of course, I also wonder if there is any information we are missing and if there was a proto-writing system, perhaps there's evidence for even more signs and symbols. Deciphering prehistory is difficult because writing systems didn't exist at that time and some of the things that people did in those days seem pretty baffling by our own standards. However, as I always say, perhaps they did write things down, it's just that we are looking in the wrong places or analysing the information that is available in the wrong way. As an example, I for one think that the megalith builders were so clever to do what they did that they must have found a way of conveying information, but somehow we are missing it. My favourite saying is that it's hidden in plain sight.
I really commend all the researchers that have analyzed Paleolithic art because this is a hugely important discovery and I'm sure there's even more to be found. Don't forget that a lot of art was painted over earlier murals. Modern technology is crucial to uncovering those lost images, which might encode even more surprising details about the lifestyle of the hunter-gatherers, the ultimate survivors who often lived through difficult climatic conditions. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button. Thank you very much to my patrons and channel members, and I'll see you next time.